we got the broadcast is now starting all attendees are in listen only mode So good morning everyone and welcome to our Bonsai webinar about the new Bonsai release codenamed Miyogi. Uh, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. There's still a few late stragglers just coming and joining the, the meeting now. Uh, so we'll just wait for just one more minute before we get started. Okay, so let's get started. So once again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from around the world. Uh, this is the third in the Bonsai Intranet for SharePoint webinar series. Uh, first of all, thank you all for, for joining us. We are super excited to go through some of the new features that we have in the latest release of Bonsai. It's, uh, it's something that we've been working on for around about the past three to four months. Um, and what I want to go through and what we want to go through over the next hour is a lot of the new features that we have within the product give you, a, give you time to ask your questions, but also talk about some of the philosophy and some of those new features and how we think they're going to apply to Bonsai and any intranet that you're going to create. So a bit of an agenda for today. Uh, we'll go through a high-level overview of what Bonsai Miyogi is. In fact, the first thing after we, uh, we actually get started is I'll actually explain what Myogi means because what we are doing here at Bonsai Intranet is instead of giving our uh, product releases version numbers, we're actually calling them after specific types of Bonsai tree styles. Um, now, if you're not a Bonsai tree fan, and really why wouldn't you be, um, there's certain types of styles and aesthetic uh, features that uh, bonsai horticulturists do when they create their bonsai trees and Miyogi is one of the most popular styles so that's why we chose it for the name of our first release. Um, after that we'll start getting into some of the new features in Bonsai Miyogi. So we'll talk a little bit around the tabs web part, uh, we'll talk around the site directory so we do have a new site directory module within Bonsai which we feel was much improved in compared to the out-of-the-box SharePoint 2013 site directory. Um, we'll talk about some of the improvements that we've made to the employee directory as well. Um, if you haven't seen Bonsai before, one of, uh, one of the best loved features, I think, from our client's perspective is our employee directory module. And we have made a whole bunch of improvements to make that more configurable um, and make that easier to manage as, as well. And then the last thing we'll talk about is around some of the new features we've done around search display templates and content targeting. Um, and really, this is probably my uh, favorite feature in this release of, of, of Miyogi. Now, search display templates are a bit of a SharePoint uh, 2013 thing that allows you to do all sorts of fascinating, uh, fascinating things with your content. So you can aggregate content across multiple sites. But not only that, you can now target content based on specific user profile properties. So with a lot of the larger clients that we're working with on Bonsai, 
one of the things they're asking us for is, you know, if I have content, would I be able to target it to employees based on maybe their job role, based on their region, based on skills and expertise? And we can do all of that now using some of the display templates that we've created for, for Bonsai, and we'll go through a lot of that as well. So fairly light on slides for the next 45 minutes, uh, fairly heavy on demos. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to, to, to put up your hand through GoToMeeting. And we do have a couple of people on the uh, Bonsai side uh, ready to answer and assist if we, if we need. So a little bit about us, um, a little bit about Bonsai intranet in general. So first of all, my name is Michael Butarek. Uh, I'm going to be hosting this webinar and taking through all of these great new features. Um, I'm the founder of both Dynamic Our Consulting and the product director at Bonsai Intranet. Um, I'm also a four-time Microsoft SharePoint MVP, so quite a lot of experience within, uh, within the SharePoint space and a lot within the intranet space as well. Um, my real passion around SharePoint is to make sure that SharePoint gets used and provides business value, and that's one of the reasons that um, I co-founded Dynamic Owl and also co-founded Bonsai Intranet as well. Um, if you have any questions, either now, during the webinar, or after, uh, feel free to get in touch. You can always go to the Bonsai website at bonsai-internet.com, uh, and feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, which is at Michael Pissarek. Um, and if you weren't aware, I'll keep this pretty quick. So um, the product that you're looking at today and the product that we developed is called Bonsai, Bonsai Intranet for SharePoint. This is an out-of-the-box intranet solution that sits on top of the SharePoint 2013 platform. Soon we are releasing the Office 365 version called Bonsai Online as well, which will also give you very comprehensive intranet capabilities on Office 365. The reason that we develop Bonsai is that we feel that there's room in the market for a really beautiful uh, user experience uh, intranet solution out there. So what we say with Bonsai is Bonsai gives you all of those common intranet capabilities at a fixed cost in addition to providing a wonderful user experience. And hopefully you'll see some of that during this morning's webinar. Now a little bit of housekeeping as well. Um, if you want to tweet around about this webinar, we do have a hashtag, which is hashtag Bonsai webinar. Uh, if you tweet, we've got some people standing by so they can uh, answer any of your questions. Also, if you're obviously online, feel free to use the GoToWebinar, uh, GoToWebinar features as well. Um, if you have any email questions before or after, feel free to email us at info at bonsai-intranet.com uh, and also to visit the uh, Bonsai website at, bonsai at www.bonsai-intranet.com as well. So enough with the, uh, enough with the preamble uh, and let's get on to Mayogi. So as I said, this is the first major update to Bonsai that we've done since we've launched the, the product. And we're trying to do updates with Bonsai around every six months. So the first release is called Bonsai Mayogi. Now you're probably wondering what Mayogi means. Now it's not Miyagi, as in Mr. Miyagi. There's a lot of people in our office who actually think that would have been a better name. Um, but like I said previously, what we're trying to do to keep the whole Bonsai team is we are naming every Bonsai release after a particular style of bonsai tree. And Mayogi is probably the most popular style of bonsai tree um, that's out there. Um, I'm not going to go through all, all of this, but if you actually if you're interested in different types and styles of bonsai trees, there is a ton out there. It's actually quite fascinating. Um, but like I said, Mayogi, since this was our first release, uh, we decided to name it after the most typical type and style of bonsai tree. And there's a little bit of a picture of that style as well. Now we had a few release goals as well for this particular version. Um, so as we've started rolling out Bonsai to a lot of our clients, um, there's been a whole range of common requests that we've tried to feed in back into the product as well. Um, and this is a great reason why, why having an intranet product like Bonsai really works for a lot of our customers. Because not only are you getting updates you know, every six months with new features, with bug fixes, but really as an organization, you're getting the best of breed intranet capabilities from what other organizations think as, as well. So a few bug fixes went into this. Uh, we incorporated a whole bunch of common requests and we'll go through them. Um, we also had a lot of our clients asking for additional content aggregation capabilities. And the way that we've done this in this release is through the search display templates, which I'll go through. 
but really what this means is, you know, how can I take content from multiple areas within my intranet or even multiple areas around SharePoint and show them on my Bonsai intranet in one particular location. The next thing that we did is we had a huge amount of customer feedback for a site directory module. Now, a site directory, which I'll go through in a few minutes, is really a way for an organization to expose the types of SharePoint sites that they have, allow users maybe to favorite those sites and search for those sites as well. If you're a small organization and maybe you only have you know, a, you know, 20 or 30 sites on SharePoint, it's not a big deal. But we do have organizations that literally have tens, hundreds, some even have thousands of SharePoint sites set up. And trying to find those sites as a user is really problematic. So we developed a module for that. Um, and we did a few things as well that are going to set us up for future releases as well. So let's talk about the first thing. So the first new feature that we have in Bonsai Mayogi is this concept of a tabbed web part. Now, think of this as a way to be able to make the most use of your intranet real estate. And this is some feedback we got from a lot of clients where their home pages started to get pretty long. And also they might have had you know, five or 10 document libraries on a single page. And they wanted that ability to actually make use of, make use of that real estate a little, bit, uh, a little bit more effectively. Now this is a common, uh, common capability in the web space. But really what the tabbed web part does is, strange enough, allows you to show content in tabs. We've tried to make it in Bonsai that it's very, very easy for an end user to set up as well. It's really a great way to show more content in a single area without using additional real estate. And we're finding for our larger clients, they're starting to use these tabs to show maybe different types of targeted news, events, policies, or procedures as well. The nice thing with our tab the web part in Bonsai is that I actually use it on any particular page type within Bonsai as well. So let's go to a bit of a demo here. Uh, let me just change this over to Google, uh, to Chrome here. Okay, so here is, uh, here is a little Bonsai test development environment that we have going on here. Now, for those of you who ha haven't seen all of the features that Bonsai has, we definitely don't have enough time to cover all of them. Um, if you go to the webinars link off the homepage, there's all of the other features that, that we have. But uh, one of the new things, as I said, uh, is around the tabbed web part. Now, around, if you have an internet homepage, like we do here, we have a feature news area with our slider, we have our important links, we have things like an events calendar and an employee spotlight. One of the things we started to find speaking to our end users is if they try to plow more information onto their home page or even other areas, that um, this home page simply got too busy. So one of the ways to get around that is to use a tab approach as well. So we can see here on this left hand side, we've got the Bonsai tab the web part kind of working its magic. So I can see when I land on here, I've got recent news. And if I click on industry news here, I actually uh, get changed this view and I can see industry news as well. So this is an example of maybe if you're trying to target content to users on your homepage, that you can set up these web parts and essentially what you can do is uh, have these two items in a tab-like format. Now the way that we do that with Bonsai from a backend administration perspective is quite easy. If I go and edit this homepage, so it's going to take me into the SharePoint editing experience. And you can see that I've got a couple of different Bonsai roll-ups here. So this is called our news roll-up web part. And what this news roll-up web part is doing is essentially rolling up news from uh, a news site within Bonsai. And there's a couple of different types of news we have here. So we have industry news here um, that we're pointing this web part at. And we have recent news here as well, which is essentially all news items. Now, if you think about it, if you wanted to show these two items on your home page and didn't have the tab web part, you're starting to get into a pretty long home page. It doesn't really work particularly well. So what that tab web part allows us to do is I can simply go to uh, any page within Bonsai, whether it's a web part page or whether it's a normal page. I can go and I can configure this web part. And all I do, it's nice and easy from an end user perspective. I've got a few options here. But what I do essentially is I put in the titles of the web parts that I want to tab. I can click on show web part titles. I can give it an appearance. 
um, and then that's basically it. So we can see that in edit mode, as a user, I can still go in and edit these, these web parts. But what happens is when I click on OK and when I publish this page, and let me just click on publish here as well, continue, we can see that Bonsai generates these tabs nicely for us. So here we got our recent news and our industry news. Now, for some of you more technical folks, this tab web part doesn't only work on, um, on web part pages. So say, for instance, that I have a news article about Canada, Canada's economy. And when I click into this news article, what the author has done is they've created a really nice news article here, which is great. We've got a bit of an image. And then what they have here as well is they have certain documents that they wanted to show here. So this is the article title, and they have policies here. So we've got a few policy documents that we're pulling out. And with our uh, document roll-up web part, we can easily see and filter through those. We've got a range of procedures here uh, as well, and we've got a range of forms. Now, this looks okay. I mean, it's not a bad thing. We can see that someone can read this article and kind of go down. But wouldn't it be nicer if we could maybe put these in tabs? So instead of users having to scroll down the page, we've got a nice little tabbed experience. So why don't we do that now? So what I need to do as an end user is I go and click on edit this page. We get into our bonsai editing experience here where we've got all of our nice tabs. I'm going to go to page content here. And I'm going to go and insert our tabbed web part. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on bonsai web part, and this is the web part that I want. I want tabs. So this makes sense. I'm going to click on add. Now what I have to do now is configure this web part as well. So I'm going to go to here and click on edit. Now I've got a few things that I have to do here, but essentially what I need to do is it's asking me for the web parts to include. Now the web parts that I want to include is policies, procedures, and forms. So that's all I have to type in. So if I start typing in policies, procedures, and forms. Now for those of you who know me, it's uh, my spelling is really, really bad, so it's going to be a miracle if it's actually spelled properly. So we're going to want to roll up these three, these three particular web parts. So these are the ones I want in tabs. I can keep calling it tab web part because we're not going to see that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change the Chrome layout from default to none, and I'm going to click on OK. Now that I have this here, I have my tab web part set up. If I now publish this page, we're hoping that if I go down here now, we have our three web parts in a really nice tabs format. So instead of having those items stacked below each other, now what I can do as an end user, I can see all of the policies, I can click on procedures, and I can see all of them as well, and I can click on forms as well and see, see all of them. And I still have the same capabilities to kind of go through things back and forth um, as I like as well. So really easy to be able to set up tabs. Um, it's one of those things that, like I said, we got a lot of feedback from our user, com user community, um, you know, just to be able to use these tabs to really make content appear um, in a little bit nicer sort of fashion within, within, within Bonsai. And the nice thing is not only can we use these tabs on web power pages, we can use them on any page type within Bonsai as well. And you can see from an end user perspective, super, super easy to set up as well. So that's the first piece. Now let me go back to presentation here. So that's the tabbed web part that, that we have. So really, really great new feature, going to be one of the core new features of Bonsai. Now the next thing that we did, and this is something that I'm really excited about, is created a site directory module. Now as I talked about in the intro previously, if you're a larger organization, having a centralized listing of sites where I can find different sites within an organization um, and actually subs you know, and find maybe project sites, departmental sites, is a little bit of a, uh, well, it's not a great user experience in SharePoint 2013, let's, let's be honest. So we've developed a site directory module that allows you to list your SharePoint sites in an intuitive format. You can also categorize those sites. So you can see, and we'll go through the demo, you can see that we've got different categorizations of these sites on the left-hand side. So we've got project sites, departmental sites, team sites. We've also added a bunch of really nice capabilities here. Users can search for sites, they can favorite, and they can also sort any sites that they like as well. So let's go back to the demo because this is much more interesting to see in 
action as well. Okay. So we're back here. So let's go to our site directory. Now what's nice about our site directory module is, is that it really provides the link from your intranet, which is more around content and publishing to the collaboration sites that you might have within your organization. So a really common question that's asked is, you know, it's great that people land on the intranet, but where they do their day-to-day -day work, maybe in other sites or other site collections that exist within the organization. How do we get people to start on the intranet, maybe look at some news, look at some events, look at some policies and procedures, and then go to their working areas? So this is a really great way. So when a user lands on the Bonsai site directory module here, there's a few things that they're going to see. The first thing that I can see as an end user is a bunch of different sites that are listed here. So I can see that we've got a project site, we've got an IT department site, we've got an innovation initiative that Bank Group is running, and we've also got a marketing department site here. Um, not only can I see the site title, which actually links me to the actual site, We've got nice uh, things. We've got icons here. I've got a little bit of a description. I've also got the type of site or the category that this is as well. You know, if you've got a lot of collaboration sites within your SharePoint environment, you probably want to categorize them in some way. So if I go to here and I know that I'm working on a project, maybe I want to look and find and see if there's an existing project site already created for that site. I can do that quickly and easily here. The other thing that we have as well is for each site, we have an owner, and this is really nice, and we've got link integration enabled through, through here as well, because maybe I actually want to get in touch with the site owner. Maybe I want to request access, or maybe I want to ask them if this is the site that, that I should actually be using. And we've also got a created date of the site as well. Now, in this site directory web part, there's actually a bunch of options here, so you can remove owners, you can remove whether it's the created date, there's a whole bunch of kind of configuration options uh, available through here as well. Now from an end user perspective, once again, we've tried to make this as easy as possible for end users to use. So for instance, if I land on this and I want to just see all of the project sites, I can easily filter by project site and I just see all of them. And you probably can't see the transition of a go-to meeting, but we have a really nice simple transition that happens. Maybe I want to see all of the department sites, for instance, so they're here. Maybe I just want to see all of the team sites, so they're here as well. Now, we've only got a few here because this is a demo environment, but imagine if you've got a few hundred sites here. This starts to get really useful that you can categorize these sites going forward. The other thing is I've got some basic sorting, so alphabetical, A to Z, newest, older site, all of that, that good stuff. The next thing as an end user, what I can do is if I go in here and I'm looking for a site, I kind of know what that name is, I can start searching for it as well. And as through elsewhere within Bonsai, we give you this really beautiful type of head search experience. So as soon as I start typing, let's say I'm looking for the site called Innovation Initiative, which is down the bottom here. If I go back up to the search page and I start searching for Innovation Initiative, we auto-complete for you. If I press on enter, I'm going to be taken directly to that site. So really, really nice and easy way for users to help find the site. But the other thing that we did was, well, imagine if I'm coming here to the site directory and I'm always going to the same site. I don't actually want to go here and search. Wouldn't it be nice if I can land on this particular site directory and have favorite sites available? So we've built that in on the right-hand side. So what's really nice is as an end user, maybe I'm looking for a particular site that I'm interested in, and in this case, it's the Innovation Initiative, and if I click on this star, it's actually going to go under my favorite sites list. Now, this favorite sites list is uh, targeted or it's per user basis. So as a user, I can go in and say, you know, I'm going to use the Innovation Initiative, and I'm going to use the Bonsai Project site as well. Next time I land on this page, I won't actually have to go search. I'm going to have my favorite sites listed there. So once again, a really nice user experience tweaks. So if you're working on 10 or 15 sites, for instance, I as a user can find the sites, favorite them, and then what I can do is, uh, is have them available for me next time I land on this page. And of course, to unfavorite a site, pretty easy. If I click on Bonsai Project Site and I'm not super keen on basically that one anymore, I can click on that and that gets removed as well. So very, very easy from an end user perspective to add and remove uh, favorite sites from this particular list. Really great way. So imagine you know, if you've got collaboration sites, and you've got team sites, or maybe you've got sites on your intranet. This is a really nice way for your intranet to be that connection between 
the publishing world of the internet and a launching pad into some of the collaboration activities as well. The other thing that we're finding is that um, for organizations that might have governance issues in terms of people asking or creating the same site all, all the time, they can first check to see if the site is available within the site directory and then they can actually go through a process of creating their own site for, for instance. Now, in order to make this as flexible as possible, because with Bonsai we're all about flexibility, um, we've got a couple of different configuration options. And if I go back into site contents here as well, um, there's a couple of lists here. So this first list, which is the site directory, this just stores all of the sites. But the other thing that I mentioned is you can create your own site directory categories as well. And this is a really nice feature. So what we allow you to do is you can create your own categories with a title, an image and a color. So say for instance I want to create a new category here, click on new item, once again this is all SharePoint, and I know that in my organization I'm going to have a bunch of sites which are community of practice. So I'm going to click on community of practice. I can put in an image here, so you can use any image that you like, and we make sure that it's all, uh, that it all works well. So I'm going to take a community of practice icon which I downloaded conveniently earlier, so that's a pretty nice image. Um, I'm going to choose the rendition here, so we want it to be a site directory image, we want it to be pretty small, so I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to give it a color. Now this is a really other nice feature that I think we've, uh, that I think is great. So as you saw before, you can associate a color with the site directory. So what I'm going to do for community of practice is let's make it yellow. Now in terms of colors here, once again, we do some smart things. You can put in a hex color in here, or you can just put in uh, a normal kind of uh, color value, red, you know, yellow, red, blue, green, all of those kind of standard colors. Or if you're that way inclined and you've got some corporate branding standards, feel free to put any sort of hex value in here as well, and we'll render that out nicely for you. So now if I click on save, I have another category available here. So now these are the categories that I'm going to be able to choose from. If I go back into my site directory list here, so this is the actual list. So this is where an administrator will go in and actually create um, new sites um, which, are, which are listed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change the innovation initiative from a team site into a new category. So I'm going to go click on here. I'm going to say it's not a team site but it's a community of practice here. We'll let SharePoint change that. I'll click on stop editing this list. So we can see now that the innovation initiative is a community of practice. If I go back to the site directory now we should see that the innovation initiative now is now a community of practice and I get this very, very harsh yellow color. Now yellow is probably not the best choice, but like I said, you can make it whatever color you essentially want. So really flexible from, uh, from the perspective of an end user, really flexible from the perspective of an organization as well, because maybe you want to have categories for intranet sites, department sites, community of practice, project sites, a whole bunch of other features. Um, all of that, as you can see, is really, really easy to do with the new Bonsai site directory module. Um, and as you can see, this is our kind of site directory experience here. Um, if I click on, or if I open this up in a new tab here, if I go to the out-of-the-box SharePoint 2013 site experience, this is kind of what it is, so it's not particularly great. And this is one of the issues a lot of our customers were facing. Like the sites that I'm following, which is good, and then the suggested sites to follow, but there's no real way I can go in here and get a complete list of sites within my organization. Um, this is why we found in a lot of organizations, people you know, were storing hard-coded links on their desktop or their browser for, this, for these sites. So like I said, what we try to do with a Bonsai experience is much more user-friendly, much more configurable, um, and really provides that link between collaboration and the internet space as well. So that's our second new feature. Now, our third new feature in Mayogi, after the site directory as well, is the employee directory. Now, we've had a really great employee directory in Bonsai for a while, um, but we got quite a bit of feedback from our clients as, as well. And what they wanted to do, our clients said, well, you know, this employee directory is great, but imagine if we had custom profile properties that we've added to users. Maybe a location, 
maybe interests, maybe region, maybe languages spoken. We would love to get that same type of head search experience, that same experience that we get with the Bonsai directory. So what we've done in this version of Mayogi is we've made it easier than ever to leverage custom user profile properties or any user profile properties that, that you have. So any user profile property now that you have can be exposed in your employee directory, both as a search option and as a type ahead search dropdown. Um, you know, it really allows for information about employees to be surfaced quickly and, and easily. And the great thing is, is that we give you this really amazing type ahead search experience for any profile property as well. So let's jump into a bit of a demo once again here. So let's get out of the site directory and let's go to our employee directory. Now if you haven't seen the employee directory within Bonsai, um, it's one of the things that, like I said, we're really, really proud of. This is kind of the experience where you land on this employee directory. You know, we see, let me just zoom out here, we see all of the people that we have within the organization. We can do really common things like filter people by first name or by last name, for instance. Or if I want to get in touch with Ian, I can just click on him and I see all of these contact details. And these are all active links as well. So if I want to essentially start a phone call with him, I can just click on that and start, start doing that as well. But the other thing that we have is this concept of searching. So I can actually go in here and start looking for a particular person and actually get this really nice type of head search experience. And by default, what we show in this type of head search experience is the person's title and the person's location as well. But we had a lot of clients that wanted more. They wanted the ability to maybe show the person's language or the skill or a department or a particular region. And they also wanted the option to have additional search options here as well. So in Miyogi, we've made this easier than ever for you as an organization to basically go and edit those pieces. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the employee directory web part. Now, there's a few options that I have here. So the first thing that I can do is put additional search filters down here as, as well. So maybe I want to have the ability to not only search for people from a single search box, but maybe I want to have the ability to search for people by a department or their office location. Now, that the way that this works, I'm not going to get super technical here, but essentially what you put in is you put in the title here. So we're going to have location. And this is the manage property and search. Now, for those people that aren't technical in SharePoint, don't worry, that's not a problem. This literally takes a few minutes to set, set up. But it gives you all of the flexibilities that, that, that you basically need. So what I'm putting in here is I'm creating two additional search filters. One that's going to allow me to search on the location and give me this beautiful type of head search experience. And another one that's going to allow me to search on department. I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to click on apply. Now, if I go down here, now this is a little bit squished at the moment, simply because of the resolution that, that we're running here. But don't worry, once we publish this page, it's going to look good. We can see now that I have additional boxes for location and department here as well. And let me actually get rid of this semicolon, because that's why we've got a little bit of craziness going in here. And actually, I'll click on OK so you can see the full kind of experience here. So what we've done here is we've added additional search options for location and for department. And what we're actually doing is we're pulling those values out from a person's user profile. So each person within, uh, within bank group has got a location assigned and a department. Now, that's all you have to do. Now as an end user, I can come here and if I start searching for people by department, look what we do. We actually go through all the departmental values within bank group and we actually give you a really beautiful type of head search experience. So if I'm maybe searching for a department or everyone that works in, say, the administration department, as an end user, I simply type on this, click on enter, and here are all the people that work in administration. Not only that, maybe I want to do that for location. So maybe I want to start searching for people in Vancouver or in Victoria as well. So once again, any profile property that you have on here, we can, we can do it. The next thing that you can do with Bonsai as well is if I start searching for someone, maybe I actually want to show people the location and the department or other profile fields directly in this drop-down search results. We can easily do that as well. So let me go and edit this web part again. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take location and office number and department here, and I'm going to put it in this additional fields to display. So you can see this is a really complex thing that we're doing here, but we've tried to make it that it's simply just out of the box. So I can add these two pieces here as well. I'm going to click on OK. Now I can actually go down, and now when I start searching for someone, you'll see we've got a couple of new fields here. So I've got not only the uh, the person's name, I've got the location and the department. So we can see that Harry Mills, for instance, his location is Toronto and his department is operations as well. So think of it in terms of your organization. Maybe you have specific pieces of information about a user that you want to add to this. Maybe you want to add languages spoken. Maybe you want to have some softer things like skills and interests, for example. And this literally takes minutes to set up within Bonsai. So let me just go and edit this web part again. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in a whole bunch of these things. So what I've got here is, let me put these in. So what I'm going to do, oh, we don't want that. We've got, lo we're going to put in a location, we're going to put in a department, we're going to put in interests, which comes from SharePoint, and a region as well. And we'll do the same thing here. And you can see all the other configuration options if you don't want to show people's pictures or their roles or their location. You can remove all of that as well. So you can really make this web part your own um, in whichever way you like. So I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to publish this page out so our other end users can go and basically do this. And now when I come back to this employee directory search experience, if I click on search options, look at all the great things I have. So not only can I start searching for people by location, Maybe I want to search for them by department. So let's start searching. We have department with K, human resources, for instance. But maybe I want to actually search for people by interests, because we know that in a person's profile, you can also have interests attached. So maybe I'm looking for someone who's got an interest in coffee. We know Ray is our infrastructure architect. I can assure you the man has a keen interest in coffee. Um, but what this means is that if you add any of these additional properties to your profiles, you can expose them to this employee directory so easily. And we've got a lot of clients now that you're adding these options. So not only do they have you know, the search box, maybe they have the location, the department, interest, languages spoken, uh, whatever else we have, we can do that really, really quickly and easily. And the same thing, if I start searching for someone now as well, I get a whole bunch of information. Here. So I get the location and the department and their, their interest. Super, super configurable, really, really quick and easy to get that going. Um, and once again, the nice thing with Bonsai as well is maybe later on down the line, you, you, know, you realize that you want an additional piece of data stored in someone's profile. For instance, here's my SharePoint profile that's driving all of this information. Um, and I've got you know, the default SharePoint stuff, skills, birthday, interest, schools. But I've also got some custom properties here as well, region, languages. And this is a big thing in the Bonsai office. Um, the favorite sandwich. So we've got a few people which are uh, very, very keen about sandwiches. In any way, I can add these to my particular uh, to my particular profile property, and then if I actually go back here, I can easily access and add them to my employee directory experience. Really, really simple to do. Um, really, really easy to make uh, to make happen as well. So. That is the new employee directory experience. Once again, really, really great feedback from a lot of our clients that were showing this because it's just so flexible, really, um, and makes it you know, nice and easy. So the next thing that we are going to talk about, let me feverishly go back to this PowerPoint presentation here. Next thing we're going to talk about is a huge piece. So search display template. Now, when I said in the beginning that this is probably my favorite feature, this, this definitely is. Now, what we've done for the more technical folks of you on the call is we've developed a range of search display templates that allow you to use the content by search web part to aggregate, target, and show content from anywhere within your SharePoint environment. Maybe it's even cross farm. Maybe it's in different site collections. For the less technical folks on the line, what this allows you to do is it gives you a way to roll up content in any way that you like. So maybe what I want to do is say, I want to go to my entire SharePoint environment, and I want to roll up all of the project proposals that have been approved 
across every single site that I have and show them on Bonsai. That's really, really easy to, to, to do. And what we're doing is leveraging the power of SharePoint search to be able to aggregate and to be able to target content to users as well. So this makes this really, really powerful uh, to, to, to do. So um, this is a lot of kind of SharePoint behind the scenes stuff going on, but let me take you through a bit of a demo of how this works. But really, um, you know, if you've had any experience in SharePoint 2013, you really understand the power that this, that this provides. So let's jump on the back onto our Bonsai environment here. We're going to go through a little bit of a demo in terms of how we can target content. Now, within, uh, within this Bonsai environment, we have an area for tools and resources. And there's a couple of things that are in action here. So what we've got here is, is we've got a bunch of content here. And we've also got content that's targeted to a specific region. So we can see we've got stuff that's targeted to Sydney in tabs, we've got stuff targeted to Vancouver in tabs, and we've got stuff targeted to New York in tabs. Now, the way that this works, this is the first example of how powerful the search display templates are. Because you can see I've got a tab here called My Location. And what we're actually doing is there's a library here within this Tools and Resources site. And let me show you what this is if I go to Site Content. Uh, so it's, let me go to policies here. So what we have here is we've got a range of policies and a range of documents, and we've got a region field, because we know that these particular policies, and these aren't actually policies, you can see there's photos of, you know, um, a hamster doing yoga, but anyway, the idea is that these are documents that were targeted to a specific region. The regions that we have is New York, Vancouver, and Sydney. Now, what we also have for our users here is we actually have a field called region here. So this is going to provide the link of the types of documents that are targeted to a specific region, and then what region as a user I belong to so I can target that information to that specific user. Now, if I go back here, if I go back to this page, what we've done here is we've used the new content by search web path. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit. And I'll show you exactly what we've done here. And we'll go through this. I'm going to click on edit this web part. Now, this is a content by search web part. This is an out of the box SharePoint web part that we can basically use. But what I've done here is I've done something interesting and something that's really powerful. This is the query that I use to be able to take content back. And what I'm actually saying is I want to get content, but I want to target on this region field. And this is the funky out of the box SharePoint way to, to represent this field. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, target content based on the user's region. Now, that's all I've done here. Now, in terms of how this works, let me just publish this page out. and I'll show you how this works in real, in real time here. Now, as a user, if I land on this My Location tab, at the moment, I'm seeing content from Vancouver, okay? Because if I go to my profile here, I can see that my region here is actually Vancouver. But what about if I go in here and change this? So what if I go in here and say, well, I actually want to target content from New York. Now, as a user, I can do this, so you can set this up as a SharePoint admin. I'm going to click on Save All and Close. So SharePoint's going to be very nice and say, don't worry, this is not going to, it's going to take a little bit of time. But it's actually instantaneous now. If I go back here and look at Custom Properties, I can see that my region is New York. If I go back to this particular page and I refresh this, my, since my location now is New York, I shouldn't see content from Vancouver. I should only see content from New York. So let's click on Refresh. And here we go. Right Now I have my location is New York. And look, I've got content targeted to me because I'm in New York. Now this is a really simple example. But imagine the power that it can offer you. So I'll give you some typical use cases from our customers that we're finding. We're creating news, and we want to be able to target news by region or by location. You can do that. We have policies and procedures and forms. I would want to target those policies or those procedures or those forms based on a job title or based on a skill. You can easily do that as well. It takes a little bit of time to set 
those plumbing pieces together. However, once you've done that, you've got really easy content targeting capabilities. Now, the other thing that we can do as well, and this is the last thing that I'll show you, is the ability to do some really, really nifty things. So we have a bunch of content within this tools and resources area. There's forms, there's policies and procedures. They all live in different subsites here. Wouldn't it be great if as an end user I can land on this main site and see in real time all of the content that's been updated across all of these libraries? Okay, so maybe you work in a financial institution, for instance, and you have policies and procedures and people want to know when they're updated. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty common ask. Now, if, it's, if they're across multiple libraries, it's a little bit difficult because someone would have to go in and check each library. Wouldn't it be great if we can aggregate all of those changed items together, put them on a web part onto our intranet here and show them? That's what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a web part here and I'm going to use the content search web part. This is an out-of-the-box web part that SharePoint provides. So once again, we're all, use, we're all about using as much out-of-the-box features as we can within SharePoint here. So we've added this web part, and already SharePoint is trying to give us back items. So I'm going to click on edit here. Now, this is kind of a little bit outside of what Bonsai can do, but um, in terms of this content by search piece. But what I can do now is I can put in a query. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a query that's just going to show uh, the content that I want. So at the moment, this thing is returning back 547 results. So we don't want that. But what I actually want to put in, I just want to see all of the content that contains um, all of the items from this site and below this site. So I'm going to add this property filter. And I'm going to click on test query. So now what we're seeing is we're actually seeing a whole bunch of documents here that are stored across all of these sites within all of these libraries. But the other thing that I want to do as well is not only do I want to see that, there's pages and there's documents and there's list items in here. I just want to see PDF documents or Word documents as well. And the way that I do that, I'm just copying this from the other screen, is I use file extension and the file extension. So I just want to see PDF files and I want to see docx files. Now, if I click on this now, what we're getting here is we're actually getting all of the PDF and Word documents from this Tools and Resources site and any sites below it. Now, the other thing that I want to do as well is I want to sort, because not only do I want to see all of these items, but I want to see what's changed. So I want to sort by the last modified time, and I want to make this descending. Okay, so the stuff that's been changed is going to be at the top, and the, uh, the stuff that's been changed most recently is going to be at the top. And the stuff that's changed later is going to be down the bottom. And I click on test query, and I can see I've got all of these items here. So that's great. So that's my uh, that's my query here. Now if I click on OK, I'm getting these items back in SharePoint. But the problem is, is that they look pretty ugly. Right? So let's be perfectly honest here. So this is kind of the out-of-the-box way that SharePoint shows me these things. I get this real kind of crazy thumbnail. So it's not particularly great. So what we've done here now is for anything that I do here, I can actually choose a particular display template that I want. And we have them for everything within Bonzo. We have them for links, we have them for documents, for news and events, for pages, spotlight items, all of this sort of good stuff. But what I want to do, I want to show documents. Now all I have to do is this. I've got my items. I click on Bonsai Documents Display. Let's make it a single column. And look what I have. I have a list of documents here that look like it's just a normal Bonsai web part. Now, the other thing that I want here as well, I don't want to show three things, but let's say I want to show the latest, I don't know, eight items. And I'm going to change this appearance for content by search to recently updated content. I'm going to do all of that, and I'm going to click on OK. Now, look what we've actually done here. In like five minutes, we've created a roll-up of content that's changed through multiple libraries and multiple areas within a site. So, so easy to do, so, so powerful. So these are actually all of the updated items. But the other thing that we've allowed you to do with Bonsai is maybe you want to add some additional properties. So maybe you don't want the title of the document. You don't only want the name, but you also want when it was updated. So we've given you some slots here. So I've got display, uh, title one is display author. But what I want to do, I want to get another managed property. And this managed property has got a terrible name, but this basically gives me the date that these documents were modified. 
So now what we're going to do, we're going to see an item with the title, with the author, and with the date that it was modified. And now if I click on OK here, okay, there you go. Here are all of our eight recently modified items with the author and with the title as well. And so let me just go back one step here because I have to change the crawling through here uh, to make sure that we that we actually see this web part because by default SharePoint removes that for us. Let's go down here and appearance. I'm going to click on Chrome is going to be the default. And I'm going to go on OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this page out as well. But now look at what we've created in Mealy Minutes. We've created a roll up of content that shows me the most recently updated content in this site and any sites below it. Now wouldn't that be incredibly useful? Imagine if there's a policies or a procedures portal or a forms portal or news or any type of things. Look how now, as soon as I update one of these items to say I'd update travel account form, it's going to appear at the top here. Really, really nice and easy to use. Uh, I've also got the option to show additional items through, through here as well. Now, we're going to do an additional webinar around this content targeting piece because it is a pretty powerful and really flexible piece of functionality. This is just a really simple example, but really the possibilities are endless within Bonsai of being able to target content and aggregate content as well around your SharePoint environment. So that's the search display templates piece and that's really the four and five, or sorry, the four main new features of Bonsai Myogi. As you can see, you know, even though this is a minor uh, this is a minor release of Bonsai. You can see what we're trying to do in terms of adding new and additional capabilities in terms of uh, in terms of always getting new features, looking at the best practices in the intranet space, and making your Bonsai intranet as good as possible. Now we've got about eight minutes left, and we have got a ton of questions coming in. So let me just kind of uh, let me kind of grab through a couple. Okay, so the first question is, I'm not sure who this is from, but thank you. So the first question is, is the site directory a list maintained by an administrator? Can you share external links in there as well? So great question, and the answer is yes to both. So the site directory is a list that's, that's maintained by an administrator. So maybe as part of your governance process, when someone requests the SharePoint site, you know, they actually get a site admin to, to put an entry into that site directory as well. And once again, that list is fully controlled. So typically you would only have a site administrator or maybe an intranet owner or IT be able to add and remove sites. It's definitely not something that you want your, uh, your, your end users to do. The second part of the question, can you share external links in there? Yes, you can. Because the way that we've structured that site directory is it's just a simple URL. So maybe in your site directory you want links to SharePoint sites, but maybe you also want to have links to other systems or other locations within your organization. We uh, fully provide support for that as well. Uh, the next question around the site directory, is the site, is the site directory within a single site collection or across all site collections in the web app? Now, uh, the answer to this is it's actually across all site collections within the web app. Because you can put in any URL there as an administrator, it can be all site collections within a single web app, across multiple web apps, across multiple farms. Really, we give you the most flexibility there. So you can essentially put in links to anywhere that, you, that you'd like. And this is where the site directory becomes really powerful. Because what I can do is, say I've got multiple SharePoint farms, for instance. So I've got sites not only on-prem, but in Office 365, because I can put in any type of URL that I want, I can actually have a really cohesive user experience from, from there as well. So maybe my intranet is on premise, I've got a whole bunch of sites and site collections in Office 365. From an end user perspective, they're landing on the site directory and they're launching off uh, into other sites as well. Uh, and the last question that we'll go through as well, um, just so we can finish up a little bit early, other fields cumulative in uh, cumulative to the results. If you want to see all administrators in location, um, or would the results show one or the other? Okay, I think I understand the question. So the question is, when you do a people search and you choose from those fields, 
Um, say I choose two fields, is it going to be cumulative? So is it going to be something like an and, um, or is it going to be odd? So you actually have that option in the employee directory to turn that on or off. So you can have it that if you kind of pick particular values from those fields, you can and all of that stuff together. So in terms of the question here, can I see all administrators in a particular location? Correct, you can do that. Or the other option in that web part as well is to make it a little bit easier where you're just oring content. And the reason that we've put that flexibility in um, is basically because if you have a lot of users, the anding makes sense. But if you don't have that many users, then the oring makes a little bit more sense. And sometimes people get a little bit confused as, uh, as well. And I'm just going to answer one more question here as well. So is the site directory security trimmed? No, the site directory is not security trimmed um, because it's actually a list that's stored within, within SharePoint. Now, you can, if you want to, for instance, security trim that item that's stored within the site directory. So maybe there's a board of direct, maybe there's a link to the board of directors site there that you only want people from the board of directors to see. You can securely trim that item but by default, we don't actually do that. Um, and the reason that we don't do that by default is what we've found working with organizations is the concept of transparency, being able to see what sites exist is a really powerful thing. I'm sure people have been in the situation online where you know, you're working on a project or you're working on an, on, on an initiative and you're working in one SharePoint site, but there's also another complete SharePoint site that a whole bunch of other people are working from as well and they actually don't realize until maybe halfway through the project um, that there's two, two sites there. Our site directory module actually allows us to, to kind of expose those sites to people. So it provides a little bit of transparency throughout the organization. So we are almost out of time. In fact, we are out of time as well. Um, so once again, thank you so much for joining us for the release of Bonsai Mayogi. Um, as you can tell, there's been a lot of new features there. There's definitely more features coming down the, the, the line. There's a range of features that we're working on in terms of mobility access, um, in terms of new features with events, in terms of how we're managing documents as well. If you have any questions or I didn't answer any of them as, uh, as well, please feel free to contact us at info at um, or get in touch with me directly. Uh, either through my email or through my Twitter account. Um, but once again, thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, we are really excited here at Bonsai about this new uh, launch. And please subscribe to the blog, and we hope to see you for our next webinar. Uh, and also, like I said, again, if you have any questions, even if you're not interested in buying Bonsai, but you have some feedback or some great ideas, we would love, love to hear them. Thank you so much, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, morning, or evening.